Python's min and max. Python's built-in min and max functions come in handy when you need to find the smallest and largest values in an iterable or series of regular arguments. Even though these might seem like fairly basic computations, they turn out to have many interesting use cases in real-world programming. You'll try out some of those use cases here. In this course, you'll learn how to use Python's min and max to find the smallest and largest values in your data, call min and max with a single iterable or with any number of regular arguments, use min and max with strings and dictionaries, tweak the behavior of min and max with the key and default arguments, use comprehensions and generator expressions as arguments to min and max, look at some practical examples showcasing the usefulness of min and max, and code your own versions of min and max in pure Python, which will help you understand how these functions work internally. To get the most out of this course, you should have some previous knowledge of Python programming, including topics such as for loops, functions, list comprehensions, and generator expressions. Any code that you see running in the REPL will be using the bPython interpreter. This is a replacement Python interpreter that offers a number of enhancements, including code highlighting and suggestions, but any code you see running on screen will work in the Python REPL, which is typically accessed by typing Python or Python 3 at your terminal or command line prompt. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Getting started with Python's min and max functions. Python includes several built-in functions that make your life more pleasant and productive. They mean you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Two such functions are min and max. They mostly apply to iterables, but you can use them with multiple regular arguments as well. As their names suggest, they take care of finding the smallest and largest values in input data. Whether you're using Python's min or max, you can use the function to achieve two slightly different behaviors. The standard behavior for each is to return the minimum or maximum value through straightforward comparison of the input data as it stands. The alternative behavior is to use a single argument function to modify the comparison criteria before finding the smallest and largest values. To explore the standard behavior of min and max, you can start by calling each function with either a single iterable as an argument or with two or more regular arguments. And that's what you'll do straight away. The built-in min and max have two different signatures that allow you to call them either with an iterable as their first argument or with two or more regular arguments. The signature that accepts a single iterable argument looks as seen on screen. Both functions take a required argument called iterable and return the minimum and maximum values respectively. They also take two optional keyword only arguments, default and key. On screen is a summary of what the arguments to min and max do. In these signatures, the asterisk means that the following arguments are keyword only arguments, while the square brackets denote that the enclosed content is optional. Later in this course, you'll learn more about the optional default and key arguments. For now, just focus on the iterable argument, which is a required argument that leverages the standard behavior of min and max in Python. The first call to min returns the smallest number in the input list, in this case, minus five. If you pass an empty iterator to min or max, then you get a value error because there's nothing to do on an empty iterable. The first call to max returns the largest number in the list, 9. An important detail to note about min and max is that all the values in the input iterable must be comparable, otherwise you get an error. As you can see on screen, numeric values work fine. These examples combine int and float numbers in the calls to min and max. You get the expected result in both cases because these data types are comparable. But what would happen if you mix strings and numbers? As ever, the best way to find out is to give it a try. You can't call min or max with an iterable of non-comparable types as an argument. In this example, a function tries to compare a number to a string, which is like comparing apples and ladders. The end result is that you get a type error. 
The second signature of min and max allows you to call them with any number of arguments, providing that you use at least two. This signature has the form seen on screen. Again, these functions return the minimum and maximum values respectively. The meaning of the arguments in these signatures is shown on screen. This variation of min or max doesn't have a default argument. You must provide at least two arguments in the call for the function to work correctly. So a default value isn't required because you'll always have at least two values to compare in order to find the minimum or maximum. You can see this alternative signature in use on screen. You can call min or max with two or more regular arguments. As you'd expect, you get the minimum or maximum value in the input data. The only condition is that the arguments must be comparable. In the next section of the course, you'll look at using min and max with strings and iterables of strings. Using min and max with strings and iterables of strings. Using min and max with numeric values is arguably the most common and useful use case of these functions. However, you can also use the functions with strings and iterables of strings. In these cases, the alphabetical order of characters will decide the final result. For example, you can use min and max to find the smallest and largest letters in some text. In this context, smallest means closest to the beginning of the alphabet, and largest means closest to the end of the alphabet. In the first two examples, min returns A and max returns Z, as you'd expect. But take a look at these two examples. Min returns W and max returns D. Why? Because uppercase letters come before lowercase letters in Python's default character set, UTF-8. Python internally treats strings as iterables of characters, so calling min or max with a string as an argument is like calling the function with an iterable of individual characters. Using min or max with a string as an argument isn't limited to just letters. You can use strings containing any possible character in your current character set. Behind the scenes, they use the character's numeric value to find the minimum and maximum characters in the input string. For example, in the Unicode character table, the uppercase A has a smaller numeric value than the lowercase a. Python's built-in ORD function takes a single Unicode character and returns an integer representing the Unicode code point of that character. In these examples, the code point for the uppercase A is lower than the code point for the lowercase a. This way, when you call min and max with both letters, you get results that match the order of the underlying Unicode code points of the letters. Finally, you can also call min and max with iterables of strings or with multiple string arguments. Again, both functions will determine their return value by comparing the strings alphabetically. To find the smallest or largest string in an iterable of strings, min and max compare all the strings alphabetically based on the code points of the initial characters. In the first example, the uppercase H comes before P, A and W in the Unicode table. So min immediately concludes that hello is the smallest string. In the second example, the lowercase w comes after all the other strings initial letters. But note there are two words that start with W, welcome and world. So Python proceeds to look at the second letter of each word, and the result is that max returns world because O comes after E. In the next section of the course, you'll see min and max in operation with another Python data type, dictionaries. 
When it comes to processing Python dictionaries with min and max, you need to consider that if you use the dictionary directly, then both functions will operate on the keys. In these examples, min returns the alphabetically smallest key in prices and max returns the largest one. You can get the same result using the keys method on the input dictionary. The only difference between this example and the previous one is that the code is more explicit and clear about what you're doing. Anyone reading the code quickly will realize that you want to find the smallest and largest keys in the input dictionary. Another common requirement would be to find the smallest and largest values in a dictionary. Let's say you want to know the smallest and largest prices. In this case, you can use the values method. Finally, you can also use the items method on the input dictionary to find the minimum and maximum key value pairs. Here, min and max use Python's internal rules to compare tuples and find the smallest and largest items in the input dictionary. Python compares tuples item by item. For example, to determine if x1, x2 is greater than y1, y2, Python first tests if x1 is greater than y1. If this is true, then Python concludes that the first tuple is greater than the second without checking the rest of the items. In contrast, if x1 is less than y1, then Python concludes that the first tuple is less than the second. However, if x1 is equal to y1, then Python compares the second pair of items using the same rules. Note that in this context, the first item of each tuple comes from the dictionary keys, and because dictionary keys are unique, the items can't be equal. So Python will never have to compare the second values. In the next section of the course, you'll take a deeper look at min and max by tweaking their behavior. Tweaking the standard behavior of min and max with key and default. Up to this point, you've learned how min and max work in their standard form. In this section of the course, you'll learn how to tweak the standard behavior of both functions by using the key and default keyword only arguments. The key argument to min or max allows you to provide a single argument function that will be applied to every value in the input data. The goal is to modify the comparison criteria to use in finding the minimum or maximum value. As an example of how this feature can be useful, Let's say you have a list of numbers as strings and want to find the smallest and largest numbers. If you process the list directly with min and max, then you get the results seen on screen. Now these may not be the results you need or expect. You're getting the smallest and largest strings based on Python's string comparison rules rather than based on the actual numeric value of each string. In this case, the solution is to pass the built-in int function as the key argument to min and max, as seen. Now the result of min and max depends on the numeric values of the underlying strings. Note that you don't need to call int, you just pass int without the pair of parentheses because key expects a function object, or more accurately, a callable object. Callable objects in Python include functions, methods, classes, and instances of any class that provides a dunder call special method. The second keyword only argument that allows you to customize the standard behavior of min or max is default. Remember that this argument is only available when you call the function with a single iterable as an argument. The job of default is to provide a suitable default value as the return value of min or max when it's called with an empty iterable.
Here, the input iterable is an empty list. The standard behavior for min or max is to raise a value error complaining about the empty sequence argument. But because you supplied a value to default, both functions now return this value instead of raising an exception and breaking your code. In the next section of the course, you'll take a look at using min and max with comprehensions and generator expressions.